Howdy. Good evening. Shout out to the USS Carl Vinson, to the crew. Um, I appreciate you. And uh, I'm not, I'm a Marine Corps veteran, but uh, I have great respect for the people on the flight deck of aircraft carriers who perform a very dangerous, I think it's considered one of the most dangerous jobs in the world. So salute to you guys. I call this design danger zone because <laughs> well it's sort of an allusion to yeah to top gun and uh but the danger for me is painting <laughs> woohoo painting uh i want to start tonight by i guess saying you know i've been tasked with a project this christmas season um in at christmas time we're gonna have family visiting and we have uh, an activity planned, a family activity that is a paint and sip. If you're familiar with that kind of thing, excuse me, drinking my tea. Um, I, I think it's going to be more like a paint and drink. Um, we don't really have wine drinkers. We have wine, but you know, my wife and I don't drink that often. But, um, with family over, um, the kids like cocktails. And um, my wife likes an old-fashioned every now and again. Well, not every now and again, but she had it one time. We went to the Perry Steakhouse, and she indulged, and it was really good, she said. No, I tasted it. It was really good. But it kind of gave us an idea that um, we're going to have cocktails, uh, the kids, I think, are going to have strawberry daiquiris, maybe Shirley Temples. But the adults are going to be engaging in mules or cocktails. We've we've made a list of ingredients. Um, I have to procure them next week sometime. After the, I'm not going shopping <laughs> the rest of this week, that's for sure. But um, I live in Texas, and it's crazy out there. I don't know. Who else is having a a logistical nightmare? But in Texas, it I I haven't seen it. <laughs> there are tons of people out there. I, matter of fact, I went driving today and I saw I think at a stoplight and looking around me, I saw like four cars from California, two cars from Michigan. There was two from New York. I mean, it, it was. Everybody but Texas, and it like everybody's moving here. I wonder why. But anyhow, paint and drink. And um, my task is my wife's really into gnomes, Christmas gnomes. So this year we're going to be painting a Christmas gnome. I have sketched a gnome a few times. I have a like a my wife bought a, a figure. You know, so something to give me an idea of a gnome. But then she went out, I think, to Marshall's and she bought this. And this, I think, is what I am going to try to, not copy, but I'm going to use this as the example. My example to create. All right, here we go. Can you see that? Yeah. All right, that is a Christmas gnome. I think she bought this at Michael's. Um, I like it. <laughs> I'm really enamored by this. This is what I had an idea. I had, this is what I was thinking of when I thought of a Christmas gnome. It is sort of a gnome in a Santa suit with trees. And this is it. So this artist, I, you know, I don't know who 
created this, but it was a, it's one of these mass copy things, you know, you get at Marshall's. So props to the creator of this Christmas gnome. It's giving me inspiration because I'm going to not replicate it. I'm not going to copy it per se, but um, I want to, to have fun with this. And, and I want to talk about a little bit about this channel. So that's my challenge. And it kind of brings up another thing because I like to, to paint with oils. And I have, my wife can't deal with oil paint because of the smell. Um, I've tried oil paint, you know, water-based oil paints to get away from the toxicity aspect of that. Um, that still was a problem. <laughs> So I said, well, you know, can I do with acrylic, but um, golden open, which are acrylic paints with retardant, which kind of gives the, the flexibility of an oil paint, but the polymer, the, the plastic, <laughs> you can still dry it fast. It's faster than oil but it's slower than an acrylic. If you put an acrylic on canvas, you know, if you're a painter, you know, you know, it sets within 15 minutes and a half hour suckers dry. What? Well, but it gave me an idea having eight people, maybe 10, maybe 12. It could be as many as 12 people, but I'm, I'm planning on eight sitting around the table and painting the gnome and drinking. Um, I have, before I do it, I'm, I'm thinking that it'll be interesting because I what I'd like to ask everybody's permission is to film it. If, if they'll agree to that, then I'll show everybody what happens during this time. But here's the deal. I have a whole bunch of this. <laughs> this is acrylic paint that I bought at Hobby Lobby. And it's, you know, bleh, bleh. it's beginner paint. But I have a whole buttload of it. I have red, I have green, I have white, I have blue, which are the colors that I need for that painting, the one I want to create. I'm going to use it, all these acrylic paints, so I can discharge them. Because after the holidays, I'd, I'd like to stay in the acrylic realm, so I'm switching from oil to acrylic at least until spring when I can go outside paint outside so my wife my wife has a her system reacts to smells I mean it sends her system into a spasmatic attack and we have to go to the ER and it's I don't have, she has um, severe intestinal damage due to cancer treatment but her intestinal damage is not susceptible just to food, but anything that stress, um, if, you know, if something happens during the day that stresses her out, it can cause her system to, to happen to an, an inflammation event, <laughs> put it that way. And sometimes the medications that she has, um, prescribed by the doctors do not, they're not a very effective sometimes. <laughs> So I, I'm trying to mitigate that by not exacerbating the smell issue. And, and I would prefer to paint here in my office, you know, open the window and paint, but I know that the smell bothers her, so I have to find a different way. Acrylic paints are a way to, for me to do that. Acrylic paints are non-toxic. They don't smell, or they smell much less. They're, I'm, you know, I, she's never complained about acrylic paints when I painted acrylics before. So that's the direction I'm going. And in the springtime, I still have a whole bunch of water mixable and oil paints. And I have a balcony that's outside. And that's where I'm going to try painting outside as long as I can keep the wasps away. <laughs> That'd be interesting too. But um, that's what I'm doing. Now, with regards to this channel... I will admit that I have been very esoteric in this channel. I have posted videos on technology. I've posted videos on cameras. I've posted videos on computers. I've posted videos of me drawing, of me painting, of, you know, just things that I'm interested in. Eh, okay. <laughs> Granted, I've done it. 
I've come to realize, you know, if I want to take this seriously and help you, um, then you're probably subscribed to this channel for a reason, that I've given you a reason, some sort of feedback or something interesting that I've done. More likely than not, it was related to either a drawing or painting, me and my learning process of learning to draw or learning to paint, failing when I did that God awful, you know, I put too much retardant in my, my paints and it dripped. <laughs> that was a big fail. So on this channel, I, I really want to um, concentrate on, on my creative endeavors in painting. Okay. But I want to do s kind of break it up into a live kind of thing where here on a live show when I'm talking to you, like if I'm interviewing somebody, I want to do it in real time live because what you see is what you get. I don't want to edit it out and I don't want to be accused of hiding anything. It's just me, you know, or it's just me and whoever I'm talking to and I want to keep it real. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's what it is. When I'm drawing and I think most artists, most people who do art, on YouTube, they do a time-lapse video. And I'm, I'm granted, I'm not a professional artist and I don't claim to be, and I'm not an expert and I, I'm still learning. But, um, you know, if, if when I'm sketching, I think I've got my table set up, um, with a couple of cameras, uh, next to me here that I can record for hours on that table. And then I can create a video, you know, a time-lapse video, if you will, and show it to you. And I still haven't figured out, you know, maybe I need to ask you is what you would prefer. You know, should I do that to music and just say, hey, here I am drawing a gnome, a sketch of a gnome. And here was my first attempt at the Christmas gnome that I'm going to be asking other people to draw or paint in December at Christmas time. Although I probably won't be drinking until then. Um, to give you an idea, I have a bottle of whiskey back here. It's a Pendleton um, from Christmas of last year. And it's maybe that far down from the top. Um, I like Pendleton whiskey um, occasionally. But uh, it's not something, you know, it's, I'm not a fish. Put it that way. Right? Uh, but I think when my wife and I did a paint and sip, we, we took a bottle of wine and by the end of our painting session, we had consumed the bottle of wine or I did. My wife didn't, my wife drove because she didn't drink and I gave her the keys. I drank the whole bottle of wine in about two hours and I was, I was snuckered. So I've been thinking about how to do this. So I have a, um, a couple other channels and I've been thinking, you know, I have a, a channel that I can dedicate to the, some of the esoteric topics that I want to talk about. Bigfoot, aliens, Skinwalker Ranch, which is, I, I'm really interested in Skinwalker Ranch. Um, things of, um, you know, back to esoteric topics, but things that are interesting, um, approaching phenomena of the universe that we probably don't have the knowledge to fully explain yet. Therefore it's an unknown. Therefore it rises to the, you know, Ooh, 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 you know, oohs and ahs from the audience or things like this. Let me, let me, I've been watching this. I don't know if you're into this. Let me do this. Let me get here. Um, this is La Palma volcano. This is the lava flow from the La Palma volcano uh, in the Canary Islands. That lava flow happened last Thursday. And they had 276 earthquakes on Thursday alone. <laughs> I think the, the largest earthquake was 5.8 and the range from 4.4 to 5.8 from 11 kilometers down to 30 kilometers down. That's somewhat shallow, if you ask me. But that lava flow 
that lava flow went from the volcano down to the ocean in the span of four hours. And all of the volcanologists on the island who were watching this volcano were taken aback that the viscosity of this lava was not really viscous. It was not a thick, I mean, it just, you know, went down to the, from the, from the mountain, 8,000 feet. I mean, above sea level is the mountain down to sea level across the span, you know, from the center of the island all the way down to the, to the Atlantic Ocean. Surprised them all. Now, since Thursday, when they had 200, 200 earthquakes, they had like 50 and then 60 and then 75. I mean, it went down and then it, now it's curving, arcing back up. Day 67. If you are not familiar with um, the La Palma eruption, I mean, I know most mainstream news, <laughs> if you're watching some of the, you know, News channels, if you get your news from TV, I'm sorry. You know, <laughs> this is important. 67 days, this thing. I mean, sulfur dioxide. They had to close schools on the island. They had uh, two towns are cut off. They have people that the police have been telling people do not go outside <laughs> because of the particulate matter, the ash in the area. They have over 3,000 homes that have been buried in ash. If you don't know about this, on Thursday when they had those 276 earthquakes, they actually started measuring land um, crevices in the land. Are you hearing me? Um, this, where the land's splitting. <laughs> There's already a crack down the length of La Palma Island, the Canary Island on La Palma. And the fear, I mean, if scientists say it's not going to happen, this eruption will not cause a landslide that will cause a tsunami. They were <laughs> surprised by the viscosity of this lava. What are they else ignorant about? <laughs> not or going to be surprised about when they have crevices, new landslide splits in the island that are showing up 276 earthquakes. I'm just saying, if you go to YouTube and you do a search on La Palma Volcano, there will probably be a guy in there called Bushcraft Bear. He's a resident of the Canary Islands. He lives on La Palma. He speaks really good English, um, but he's a real interesting guy, a real interesting character, and he, um, I think he posted yesterday. He has a vlog. So he does like a daily update, 10, 15 minutes. Take the time and watch his vlogs just for your own information because you're getting it from the source of them. He's reading newspapers there in La Palma, what the people are being told. And he's reading, you know, um, the scientific, uh, the scientists, the volcanologists who are, who are um, talking about what's going on. And he's showing you the lava going into the Atlantic Ocean and the steam and he's saying, last night I woke up at 1 a.m. due to an earthquake. And I woke up again a minute later with another earthquake. <laughs> you know, I tried to go to sleep and here comes another one. And I, I imagine, I, I don't know the guy's real name. I just know his handle on YouTube is Bushcraft Bear. I highly suggest you watch him and this Afar TV. The, it is nature by afar, you know, when you can watch nature from afar. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, there's like three camera feeds for, for this. Definitely something you should check out. Um, but that's an esoteric topic. And I don't know, you know, if I want to put that on the other channel, I want to put it on the other channel, but how do I want to do that? I'm going to leave those questions from other channel. Um, I'd like to on this channel, you know, when I'm talking to you like this, when I'm talking about art, I want to keep it on this niche, right? And for the next month from now till after Christmas, probably till through the new year, and we're really talking about the Christmas gnome and this project. And, and some people, you know, they try to sell things, merchandise and all that stuff. And they do vlogs and, you know, do toy reviews and all that stuff. I'm not doing that. I want to show you a Christmas gnome. I want to show you the fun that you can have 
with painting and acrylic, the challenges that I'm going to have, I've never, you know, me, you know, who, who would thunk me leading a family activity of a paint and drink, not a paint and sip, a paint and drink. I imagine there will be a few who I know about <laughs> um, who may indulge in more than they should. I, I will not try to keep up with it. <laughs> um, I may have a drink or two, and I think my wife may have a drink, maybe. Um, I'm sure that others may have more. But I am going to procure, I mean, if the cocktails are good, I mean, I'm, I don't, I'm not a big drinker. I think the, my favorite drink is a hurricane, which I do on New Year's Eve. I, I like a hurricane. Um, typically we go to a, a friend's house, um, a party, and they have, um, one of those cigar guys who rolls a cigar, you know, he's from, actually he was a Cuban immigrant, he lives in Austin and he uses Nicaraguan tobacco leaves. It's the only time I get to smoke a cigar is on New Year's Eve. Yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> I think New Year's Eve and I think, um, was it July, July 4th? one other party, but New Year's Eve specifically is, um, this New Year's Eve party and they have this guy and he will make and roll a, you know, have a core, but he rolls cigars right there, right in front of you. And one of the things I enjoy, yeah, I'll do it and, and have a, you know, little, I abuse my whiskey. When I drink whiskey, I abuse it with ice. I'm sorry. I don't, that's what I do. Um, but a cigar and a whiskey on New Year's Eve is sort of a tradition. I've done that the last three, three New Year's. Uh, the last two specifically were a little bit different, but hey, why not? Um, but the Christmas gnome is the danger zone for me. And what I'm going to try to do tomorrow um, is Wednesday, and then Thursday is going to be an off day uh, with Thanksgiving. Um, we've got a big family meal plan, but tomorrow I'm going to, I'm going to record myself sketching the gnome on some Bristol paper. And so I've been taking some art lessons and I know the value now of, um, doing a, a sketch of your subject, trying to get the light values and do it in a monotone with grayscale. And when you sketch and you try to um, fix your understanding of where the light sources are and the proportions and sketching prior to painting is a key to making a good painting, I found. Um, so if, if you've not done that, if you've not made a habit of that, it would... I find that it, it really helpful for me in thinking about light source and shadow and how to, um, how to position subjects, uh, in proportion using, um, a proportional divider, if you will, um, when necessary, because I'm, I'm still not that good at drawing. I, I'm better, uh, with a proportional divider. I'm decent. <laughs> I can draw an eagle. I can draw an owl. I can, I can draw some animals really well. Some, um, this would be different. So a gnome is almost a cartoonish figure. And I, I told my wife, you know, I thought, you know, maybe after the new year's, I will stay in this realm because I really find this interesting. And this really intrigues me, this Christmas gnome, or maybe staying with the Christmas theme. Um, I've always said that I'd like to emulate Thomas Kincaid and um, yeah, he's sentimental and idealistic. And if that puts you off, then, oh, you know, then, oh, oh okay. That's, that's you. It's not me. I like it. <laughs> I like Thomas Kincaid, even though he's a hypocrite. He died. I think the night he died, he died with, he died doing what he loved. He was painting the night that he died. He had green paint. He was found the morning after he died with paint still under his fingernails, green paint. <laughs> and he died 
uh, intoxication, drinking too much. And anyhow, interesting. A hypocrite. I mean, he he came across as you know. I, I he did some paintings that were. Um, everybody has demons. I don't hold it against Thomas Kincaid that he was uh, struggling with demons. His alcoholism that he struggled with, it it destroyed his marriage and it destroyed his relationship, as I understand it, with his family. And um, you know, he he didn't have uh, time, if you will to fight that demon and to win against it and to reclaim victory. And I think that when you're dealing with alcoholism, I'm not going to glorify this paint and drink other than that this is a family activity and I want to make it fun. This is when, you know, we're still going to be eight, 12 people around a table and we're going to do something that everybody will love. And um, having a good time. And I think that this Christmas, if nothing else, it, that's what is important, to, to make memories, to spend time with the people that you love, and uh, to remember what's important in life. And I want to get back to that on this channel, and I want to stay centered on that on this channel. Um, and the things that I love, um, I love to paint, I love to create. I, lo I am in that creative space um, all the time. Whether I'm writing, whether I'm drawing, or whether I'm painting, whether I'm trying to you know, play music, either a guitar. Um, I have a piano back here that um, I have yet to dedicate um, 40 hours a day. Yes, I did say that. 40 hours a day, 8 days a week. I'm going to do it. But, um, so, there it is. And with that, I think that I want to leave you tonight um, a, a live stream. This is what you see is what you get. When I do this, I want to be totally authentic with you. I'm not going to edit out stupid stuff. I'm not going to edit out my mispronunciations which i have a tendency to do sometimes um i just want to be here and now eight o'clock um it's going to be my normal time to do this i will try to schedule these that's uh, some things i am realizing now i need to have a like a production schedule if i want to do this and do it on a certain night so you know that's my challenge um and, and to do this in a way to take it seriously so that this is beneficial not only for you, but by extension to my wife. And uh, with that, I'd like to say, I hope you have a great evening and uh, a very happy Thanksgiving. Spend time with your family and um, take care. Until next time, I'll probably be drawing tomorrow and I'll upload something. But uh, until my next live event, uh, see you later. Bye-bye.